Our bodies are made up of complex systems that help us to remain flexible and adaptable to changes in our environment. One important system is our brain. When we experience shifts, either in our environment or internally, certain parts of our brain go on and off when it is appropriate for the situation or the context in which we find ourselves. Even though the brain works as an integrated whole, we will be focusing on three areas of the brain that get affected whenever we experience a stressful or traumatic event. Let us have a look at our diagram. The green area of the brain is the thinking brain or the prefrontal cortex. When our thinking brain is activated, we can organize our day, plan for events, make decisions, solve problems, be creative, pay attention, among other executive functions. When this part of our brain is activated, we often feel calm and safe in our bodies as well as our environments. This is the most sophisticated but slowest part of our brain. The yellow area of the brain is the emotional brain or the limbic system. Here, we experience emotions, develop attachments to other people, store memories, and where hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol get triggered in the body. This is also the region of the brain that contains our alarm system known as the amygdala. The red area of the brain is known as the survival brain or the brainstem. This is the part of the brain that controls the automatic bodily functions such as breathing, body temperature, heart rate, sleep, among other functions. In times of danger or threat, these three regions of the brain respond in a sequential manner. Let's use an example. Say you're walking down a path and you notice something that looks like a snake. Instantly, the amygdala in your emotional brain senses danger and alerts the survival brain. Because the thinking brain is slow in processing dangerous situations, your survival brain shuts down your thinking brain and takes control of your body. When this happens, you would experience three possible survival responses, that is, fight, flight, or freeze. Blood then directs oxygen and hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol to your muscles and heart. However, as you draw closer to what you thought was a snake, you notice that it is just a rope lying on the ground. Your survival and emotional brain begin to slowly turn off your survival responses and your thinking brain begins to rationalize what you just saw. Unfortunately, there are times when the snake on our path may be real, constant, and persistent. This type of events are referred to as chronic stresses, which include wars, domestic violence, abuse, racism, or tribalism. These events constantly activate the emotional and survival parts of our brain, leaving individuals in states of fight, flight, or freeze. When a person remains in these states for prolonged periods of time, they may experience difficulties with recalling information, concentration, creativity, inability to regulate emotions, problems with sleep, appetite, chronic pain, low immune functioning, among other physical, emotional, and psychological problems. When communities are in constant state of survival, it can be difficult to carry out programs related to governance, peace building, and development. By understanding our survival responses, we can begin to build skills that help us manage our responses to triggers, reduce shame and build compassion for self and others, and build supportive networks within our communities. Thank you.